And welcome here for day number two or Thursday of this week of the Play vs. Spring High School Championship. We are continuing on with another set of Super Smash Brothers action here, and I am more than excited to be on this test. My name is Orbital. With me, of course, is the ever so handsome Kendo Slice, and we will be your casters for this first semifinals matchup of the Colorado High School Athletics Association, I believe, uh, matchup here. It's going to be a good one, I think, Kendo. How are you doing today? Uh, you know, I'm feeling okay. We had a little bit of uh, table jockeying a moment ago. Uh, both of you and I are able to transform into, uh, it, well, sitting or standing mode. And at the moment, I, I'm still in the bewilderment because I switched back and forth just a little <laughs> bit too fast. But Colorado, the state of Colorado, at my next door neighbor, yours as well, uh, it, celebrating Smash at the scholastic level, high school Smash on the docket for you. And, I'm impressed to see Grandview High against Fossil Ridge High. Just a mere 70 miles on the road from each other. So it's uh, pretty close. Uh, they may play each other in other things for all I know. I haven't gone that far into the history. Maybe there's a rivalry that I don't know about. I'm not sure, and maybe they do because they are playing on the land center. Of course, you are at home. If you're at home right now, you know that the players are also in the land center facing off against each other, and I think that's the best part. If you are at the venue watching this right now, we appreciate you showing up and having a little bit of fun and make sure to show the players some love as well. They're playing live, and they're high schoolers as well, I think. So really going there and trying to show their stuff, it's not always easy stepping up to the stage, and I think that's always an impressive part of it. But the players have been playing for quite some time. The bracket has been run. We are now in the semifinals in the single elimination bracket. And I think it's going to be very, very interesting. Keep in mind the way this match works out is uh, you have a team of three that are going to be competing against another three. This is not a crew battle or anything of the sort. It is individual 1v1s pretty much all the way through. And to me, that is very, very fun. So, Kendo, what, what do you think we're going to get? Are we going to get a little bit of spice of life here? What do you think? At the high school level, anything is possible. And you go with your comfort picks more often than not. But I've seen some crazy comfort picks in some of the high school championships that we have covered so far. So anything can happen. Nothing is out of bounds. For all I know, we may see a Ganondorf main completely sweep everything off of its feet. I would love that so much because I used to play Captain Falcon and it's okay. a silly, silly style. Uh, but I do agree. Some of the slower styles are there. And that's actually the really fun part about these types of matches. This is not crew battle. It's not like you can see what opponent you're going to actually play against beforehand. This is individuals. You're kind of sent out to play one at a time and you can actually almost gamble your way into a good matchup is the best way I can put it. If you go ahead and go first and it's like, hey, this is one of our players that the character pool does not really lend itself to very yeah. great matchups you can go ahead send them first and try and like go for that one third angle of we'll get a good matchup we'll match up against one of these other players that plays this and then you can work your way from there these little things are what you kind of have to watch for when it does come to this type of team battle indeed and I, I do enjoy the latter portions of this team battle format just due in part to the fact that while those first three matches are a little bit of a shot in the dark if you haven't had a pr little pre-arranged scouting uh, once you know who you're up against the final two matches are one of the two and then another one of the two so you can kind of jockey to see if you can counter pick maybe your opponent's best player on their best character uh, one thing's for sure it's always exciting and when you take into consideration with play versus with the colorado high school athletic association uh, it's been a long season they've earned their way here and now they get to be celebrated on land in the highest stage possible and i think we have it cooking for us right now Yes, we are. It is RJ and Kai to come on out to the battlefield. We got a little mech. Let's go. So this is my main as well, and I love it so much. And this matchup itself is going to be very, very interesting to see because Kirby excels at dealing with these kind of melee setups and uh, ensuring that you don't have to worry about it too much. However, if you get too close, Kirby is one of the lightest floaters. So that's what we're kind of watching for, and that will... But uh, that's, to me, what would really be interested in how do you play this out? How well can you kind of match your opponent's play? This is coming from somebody who spent a lot of time on Kirby. It, it's a 
very fun character to play, very floaty, and especially when you're going up against a grounded character like Little Mac, you're gonna have to watch the uppercut, but outside of that, you have the ability to th show a little own hitch, the fan up and down, don't jump right in, but they will accumulate quite a bit of damage, that's twice now off the ledge they've been able to get a, a, a little bit of a hammer. This is looking a little bit dangerous here. And again, with that KO punch, it's a scary, scary spot to be in, in the battlefield stage as well. It's danger, but that's just a simple tilt. Side tilt is good. And you get the one, two punch out goes Kirby. And I think that is RJ on the Kirby right now. I have gotten word, I believe, that Grandview is on that side. So it is going to be a little bit test. Remember, this is a best of three, though. If you're able to kind of gather some information, you know exactly where your opponent plays. Hey, you can work out from there. Of course, that's KO Punch. Utilize, and all of a sudden, you're in dangerous spots. You know what? The little Mac get right back up. But Kai is going to try and lay down the pay 52 here on Sock 2. Double checking on these sides. I, I know the overlay came online. It was a little incorrect, but uh, we're getting everything corrected as we go. The Little Mac is definitely not to be trifled with. If I'm Kirby, though, I, I playing around on the edge too much. Little Mac, with that grounded ability, is going to try to take control of the middle of the map. We're, we're double checking. Yes, we do have RJ on player one. That is a grand view high. RJ representing well so far on the Kirby. It, it, my my worry is you go and you, you take the, uh, the look of things. Isn't Kirby just a, a floating punching bag? Uh, there, there's some players that would dispute you on that, but that's like 0.05 yeah. of the Smash population. They, you know, we're not worried about that. It is a floaty character, but it also means it's very difficult to fully collect out, and that's why you do choose Battlefield instead of the high uh, verticality. You're more than happy about the side length, but when you get smashed like that, it's a little bit difficult to deal with. This is what I was talking about earlier. If you're not used to it, you don't know how to kind of juggle a little Mac. If you allow little Mac to set up in that ground stage, it is a problem. Now with another KO punch ready to go, if you set up properly with that up until you can get that KO as well. However, right now it is Kai doing so much work to keep RJ in a really, really bad spot. Up speed to go, and you go ahead and take this round. Uh, this round, very, I, I would almost say, decisively on the side of Kai and his little Mac. Uh, but I, I do think what we have going in is a battle for control in the middle of the stage. And what we saw was RJ giving complete reign of the stage. You have to contest and not allow little Mac to just stand in the middle of things. Uh, little Mac doesn't always have the best recovery, does has a little bit, but there was no pressure towards that end. Little Mac was just allowed to sit in the middle of things and, and take swipes. If you try to go punch for punch with a Little Mac like that, you're in for a bad time. And case in point, game number one. And that's why you actually, if you are playing something like a Kirby, you can utilize the platforms around. So one of the big things mm -hmm. about uh, Battlefield, depending on the variation you go for, those triple platforms in the middle are really, really solid in trying to force Little Mac into un- uh, unlikable situations. You want to keep Little Mac in the air, whether it be juggling a little bit or just forcing the Little Mac away from the ground game. You get him on the platforms a little bit easier to hit from below and above, and you utilize Kirby's floating. Because uh, Kirby, in my opinion, has a lot of great floating uh, combos. You can actually carry a player pretty dang far, especially one as light as Little Mac as well. Yeah, and that is another aspect of it. Both these characters extremely light when it comes down to it. So... Uh, it I thought I heard maybe a little bit of a change as we are getting in to game number two. Uh, the Kirby might be out and a King K rule on the way for RJ. So this makes a lot more sense. Uh, the reason being is King K rule has a lot more uh, heavy to them but also has a uh, another counter as well a lot of the counter characters work very well against little mac even though little mac has a counter of their own if you are able to utilize kind of this heaviness and also super armor that uh, king k rule has the expansive hitboxes of the k rule is going to almost overwhelm 
this uh, this little max play. Of course, if you allow the damage to rack up, it's another problem like this right now. The up tilt combination, it might not feel like a whole lot, but it does enough. Of course, firing right back. Nice double jump, able to stay alive right now. Going high instead, but the coverage coming out of RJ is looking pretty dang good. Yeah, that I've always enjoyed K Rule as a heavy. He has a lot of range on the ground throw. You can get that cluster shot out. Another ranged weapon to take care of. And this has allowed RJ to uh, stay the course, battle for the middle, whereas Kirby Ooh. didn't quite have the kit to go uh, tit for tat against a little mag. Oh, the hedge guard oh. failed, and they're going to make them pay, potentially. Oh. <laughs> what? What a great gowning and a great rollout technique. But remember, it's a slap that work a little bit more. Now the up B to go ahead and take that stock back. We are right back to neutral ground, and this is what I was talking about. Yes, you can actually go blow for blow, but either way, right now it feels like Kai is just a little bit more in control. When you play Little Bike, you know how to play for speed. You know how to be annoying in between those shields, and as well as the super armor. Yes, you took 30, but you drop again 55 on the screen. Here. Now the up tilt following the platform up. You deny this K roll from really setting up their own. However, the projectiles is what RJ is going to be playing for. K punch is there. Heavy hitter as the KO comes out. That is brilliant. It's one of the dangers of Little Mac. You have to watch out. Oh, no. And Uppercut getting a little bit of a juggle to start things out. And for RJ, it's, it's becoming a come from behind there narrative. Does get the stock back. So we are one stock left on both sides, but a little bit of damage the disadvantage. Oh, they're, they're oh, totaling it oh up. do it to him. <laughs> I love this so much. I Okay, so there are like small combos, but Lil Mac, it doesn't do a whole lot though. It's not like the big damage oh. combinations, but it's enough to kind of flush your opponent. And that might be the chance, a nice little down B trying to counter out, but it does give range for RJ to try and get back in the mix. But right now, a 111 is more than enough to KO. Crown is down, you lose that momentum. You're gonna grab the crown instead, throw it out and about. Kai is going to get the bump, however, very good recovery, but the down smash is good, and that will be Kai to take game number one. Really good stuff out of Kai. Consistency. We know that they have a good little Mac, but uh, for RJ, I like the adjustment. The character switch worked extremely well, and I'd, I'd love to see uh, potentially the salty run back, if necessary, going into, say, a game number four or a game number five. We'll be interested to see how things go because uh, it's up to the coaches, it's up to the players at that point, how they want to uh, devise if we end up going the full distance. Uh, again, best of five sets. That was set number one. And RJ goes down to Kai. Now, I, I, I have to ask, Orbitable, because uh, normally when you get that ground plant with K. Rule, there's a little bit of stick to it. I noticed that it was kind of stuck in air. You had the animation off the platform. Was that why they were able to get up? I hadn't actually seen one of those before as an interaction. Nope, you're just button mashing to the best of them. It doesn't matter whenever it comes crazy. down to those uh, grabs. If you get a ground smash, it doesn't matter where you are located on the stage. You are getting a smash. That's just how it kind of works in this game. And that's kind of the fun about it. You can set up in awkward scenarios and actually set up for a, uh, for a spike off that ledge as well. There are a little mechanics you can play for, but the reason that the stick didn't last as long is one, the percentage wise. The higher percentage you are, the yeah. more likely you are to lay in a stick, and that's the kind of feels bad situation. The hard button mashing surprise, I think, the likes of RJ, and that's why RJ could not prep for the re engagement, for the re attack coming out of Kai. And so, even though it was the right call, you did not expect that fast of a mash out, yeah. which surprised uh, that K Rule player. Hey, it surprised me. I know that much. I, I was thinking to myself, wait, th is this because it was off the map? I, I thank you for the clarification because, <laughs> again, it's not something that I see very often, uh, but uh, got to love the button mashing out of Kai to win uh, very cleanly in set number one. Set number two uh, in the process of being set up, and we'll give you updates as we go on. But, uh, it's raining cats and dogs in this matchup. I, I, I usually go through and I, I double check everything. For, for Grand View, we have the Grand View Wolf. And for Fossil Ridge High, we have the Saber Cat. So it, it's a little bit of a, a back and forth matchup on the mascots as well. 
I think that's a fun part as well. These high schoolers are very much representing their schools and uh, kind of their pride in their team. And I think the mascots kind of reflect that. It's uh, very impressive, to say the <laughs> least. And again, they made their way through. Uh, I was looking at the bracket about, you know, 16 other teams have made it here. Yeah from the regular season and keep in mind this has been going on since i want to say january or february regular season has come and gone and then you look at the playoff bracket they have to face off there as well that's the fun part of the souls so i feel like it's only right that we get some of the more uh you know some of the more basic animals out here it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time yes indeed it is we are looking forward to getting in uh, another shout out of course you want to give thanks to the coaches and administrators and uh, everyone, it's made possible by those who are involved in the school. So shout out to those high school coaches, the high school administrators as well for both Grandview as well as Fossil Ridge High making things happen. Shout out to the parents who are live. Uh, one of my favorite things about Scholastic Esports, and it's one of the things that impassions me, is the fact that, you know, growing up, it, it, for me, it was no, get out of the basement or get out of your room. Go, uh, you know, wash the, or go sweep the, the garage. Go sweep the, go sweep the grass. Uh, something of that nature. <laughs> there wasn't as much of the support. Uh, and I, I love every opportunity to give thanks to those parents who are supporting their young folks in this way. So a round of applause for all of those who are there supporting their young people as they are looking to represent not only their school, but their state here at the Colorado High School State Championships. We have game number two, or set number two, excuse me, getting underway, and it's Meta Knight going up against a little bit of Wario. I like this. I like this already. This is going to be a good time. Wario coming out to try and fight their way for the Wolves. This will be a big one as well. I haven't seen a Meta Knight and Wario in quite some time. However, Wario, I know, has strong combination abilities and very frustrating to deal with. Uh, remember, you have to watch out for the gaseous attacks. If you allow him to charge up, you can do a huge uh, part of my French, a fart bomb, which is very, very <laughs> powerful. You can actually do a, almost insta KO with that. And depends on how much he eats. He can eat his motorcycle. He can also try and chomp down on his opponent. So keeping eyes on that gauge is one to watch for. But Meta Knight, one of the strongest just neutral attackers out there very quick very decisive on the strikes you can rack up a large number of percentages but right now not really connecting means that this warrior player is more than allowed to kind of fight their way to top 93 so far on the first stop really good patience as well i think the meta knight was looking for e eking out some of that edge guard and we are seeing our warrior right there in the middle of it all it it's taking their time and being extremely patient letting the match come to them and it's paying in dividends uh, three times the amount of damage going on here comes a munch and a throw won't be enough to finish it but it, we're pretty close oh, it's feeling bad and there it is side smash is good forward smash feels a little bit stronger than probably necessary but that's going to be the meta knight to fire right back in however you go with the up up it allows a little bit of transgression remember you can't do that because you know there is a frame afterwards because you are locked out and touch that ground and you immediately lose 64 and more so right now the warrior feeling so good keep the job to be had of course the neutral air gonna clear out that range up smash to get a little bit more damage but nothing more than that another crab giving this warrior so much engagement this might be another stock pretty much off rip tries to go jump not gonna land Meta Knight trying to look for it motorcycle is out speed off to the left side of the stage so flying around trying to challenge what an up B to go ahead and keep yourself safe in fact neutral you are fighting with the best one one more smash can do it that's gonna be the stock that's Wario three stocks still alive yeah that is a dynamic Wario gameplay on wow <laughs> Do like the name in game as well. We are we are getting a lot of fun in that respect. The eats it down. And we do finally see a stock gone by the wayside for the Wario, but this is very comfortable confine. You are essentially two to a half. And we're seeing even more damage being brought in. Good edge guard keeping things towards the mid for the Wario, and again, we are seeing control game being the name of the game. 
And that's what they're going to be really helpful for control. That center stage control over the map itself on Battlefield. It's all about controlling the center stage, not allowing yourself to get edge guarded or anything of the sort. And right now, it does feel like it is a Braden who is trying their best to fire off. But 121 is difficult to do, and that's the motorcycle to finish it off. It is going to be Jonathan to take round one. Jonathan winning number one, and it's a, it's a much needed uh, start to a comeback for Grandview High. Fossil Ridge, of course, getting the first one. And if you are Braden, it, what do you got to do at this point? There was a lot of center stage control. Uh, there was, uh, you just seem outpowered at times. I know in the previous match where things looked bad, there was a character swap. But if you stay in Meta Knight, what do you suggest, Orbital? I am suggesting try and work around that motorcycle. One, the up B is good. It's a very strong attack and actually hit, I think, multiple times. So if you are able to spike pretty hard, you're good to go. The problem being is right now you're using it as more as a deterrent. You're trying to guess and see if you can land almost that spike power. You're leaving yourself open for a lot of wide hitting opportunities. The warrior is able to punish. And honestly, Jonathan knew the timings, knew the abilities, and knew you could bait out some of these skills. And so you need to be a little bit careful on how often you want to put yourself in those dire straits. I saw a lot of grabs come off of that up B on the Meta Knight. Maybe look for more of the neutrals. The neutrals out of Mennonite is very strong, in my opinion. You can rack up a lot of damage, like I said. And it covers a decent amount of the hitboxes. So you're like, okay, go with the neutrals. I feel fine. Let's see if they do that. But my odd face is because we are looking like we're going to have a bit of a mirror match. Incineroar on Incineroar for game number two in set number two. And uh, like a, lot of, a lot of posturing in the early game. I like it. I like it because there is no better way. If you're going blow for blow, this is the way to do it. Wrestler versus wrestler. Someone is coming out with that belt. And right now, it is going to be, I believe, Jonathan in that blue. And the original color is, of course, uh, Brayden on that reddish. Well, actually, neither using the original color. So uh, that's, wow. a, that's a little bit difficult side. That, that, it, it's a little bit off color on uh, on Brayden's side. However, the blue is coming out on top. Sometimes you just got to work that angle forward air is more than enough to finish that stock off. And it looks like Jonathan is more than ready for this one. What a lariat saying, yo, give me that extra percent. And we, we're seeing yet again, though, Jonathan, very keen on keeping center stage. Oh, oh so good. Good edge guard, and yep. they're not able to get back. It's this very clean, and we might see a three stock to end it all out, but not if it is Braden having something oh. to say. Oh! Stylish to say the least right there. I saw it coming, but I didn't think it would land. Wow. One of the wow. fastest games we've had so far. Powerful <laughs> stuff there. And we knew who was feeling better on the Incineroar. Really well done by Jonathan. I, I will compliment them, though, in making sure that the uh, alt skins were not completely uh, off-putting to us. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much. I I'm sure we can both give a little round of applause there. Not quite Zangief alt, alt skin 9 as well. So we had more primary colors being used. Mm -hmm. And and I like it. At the end of the day, it was very. Uh, I kind of like that swap selection. So when it comes down, I I believe to the stages and to the selections. Stage select is gone to the player that lost earlier, and I yeah. think they also get first character select. So it was actually uh, I think uh, Braden that chose the stage at uh, Town and City plus the Incineroar, and then it was an answer back from Jonathan saying, hey, I want to play the Incineroar too, and now we're going to battle it out. So very interesting to see that that's how you decide to kind of maneuver uh, your antics, but it did result in a 2-0 right back. So right now we're 1-1. One one. We will be having a rematch of sorts either way in a game four. Absolutely. So it'll be very interesting to see how things develop. We're guaranteed a set number four in this series and it looks like we're going to be having tim versus aiden coming up and of course uh, the last available options before we end up going into our repeat performances so th th just to, just to give you a little mentality on on that format after this we we do see both teams picking one of the players that had already performed it can be any one of the three in set number four 
And then if we go to a set number five, it can be any one of the three except for the ones that you played in set number four. So just to keep everything clear, if you shoot your favorite character and your best personnel in match number four, you better win because uh, you could fall by the wayside very easily. And I think that's kind of the fun part right now. It is one-to-one, -one, and that leads it to a little bit of a difficult situation. We know that the last player coming out is going to be the last member for each squad, and at that point, we will have seen everything here on the table. We have seen all the characters, and then it becomes a guessing game. Who do you want to pit against who? Because remember, in there, it's only a uh, best of three at the end of the day. So we've seen that pretty much everyone has kind of a nice methodical output for the characters they like to play. Uh, you're looking at RJ, who likes the Kirby and the K rule, two vastly different characters in terms of how they want to play. You look at Jonathan on the side of Grandview, and they've also looked pretty strong on the Incineroar as well as that Wario, both very heavy set, you know, bruiser style, just kind of roll over you as best as possible. The only one that really is going to surprise me is probably Kai. Uh, Kai mm -hmm. right now on the Little Mac. Little Mac is... I, I would say not one of the best. This is what I was talking about mm -hmm. when you want to throw one of your oddball players to the Wolves in the round one, and you just say, hey, can I get a good matchup? And this one just looked good at the end yeah. of the day. So I would, if we're looking past, because obviously we know we're going to go to a, a set four, I would actually expect the likes of uh, Kai to come out in, uh, in set four as well, as we are now getting in to set three. Yeah, I would love to see a, a Kai versus Jonathan style matchup that that in my opinion could go a very long way especially when you consider both of them really keen on keeping them in center map control or center stage control so something would have to give at that point and i, I would be uh, anxious to see how they go about keeping it but we have set number three it's tim it's aiden and some mewtwo versus a bowser Ooh. And we also get a final stage selection. It's so far only been like Battlefield and Town and City. Those have been the two stages that are played. Now we go to P uh, uh, Pokemon Stadium. This is going to be kind of nice to play for. You go ahead and take a look. With the Bowser, it's a whole different gear shift, I want to say. Uh, Aiden is going to be on the Mewtwo. Please keep that in mind. Aiden is actually playing for the likes of Fossil Ridge High. So uh, the scoreboards at the bottom are a little bit different than what we are usually seeing. Right now, though, with the quick spin, both of these characters have uh, kind of interesting styles, right? The Mewtwo is well known as a heavy floater. It, it, well, the model looks heavy. It's actually more of a medium light character, but can output a decent amount of damage with the combinations. The up smash on this platform is just high enough. So it's really, really nice for the Bowser, though. Everyone knows Bowser is that bruiser. If you get hit by one ability, you're getting hit by just about everything. And that's why you want to set up the grab. That side B is also so powerful. And setting up a slight nice a little tilt attack. And all of a sudden, it's a smash to finish off the stop. Yeah, I too love Bowser playing myself because he's a character that can last so long. You get the rage with your charge at the very end. And it just seems like it, it, it's un punishable at times I, i've seen up to upwards 220 250 damage on a bowser before and still somehow keeping itself alive stock to stock and right now the struggle for center stage the Mewtwo's done a, a pretty good job at least standing their ground but it seems just a little too wide there's oh. plenty of room for extra nice knockdown to get in the secure I love that little tap, denied the fact that Bowser's upbeat does not actually have as much range as you would normally want, so the recovery is not as good you need to have kind of that uh, just below, like character size uh, level, because it's more sideways action. Very well done, coming out from uh, from Aiden, and I'm going to go a little bit further. You have that stock back, you're on 89%, if you get one single hit in, uh, you're, you're gone. That's just really the, uh, the, the bottom line here. That's why you're going for these crabs. It's guaranteed damage. You're able to sidle up to 74, and now you get to keep them at bay, charge up that orb, go ahead, lay down more 101, and then some, and now you go for that smash, because the smash won't finish him off, so you're more looking to try and get him to that ledge, and maybe you can do some work, but that's no. a simple punch once again. The forward tilt is more than enough, as this is Tim to take a second. Yeah, if I am Aiden, I want to press my advantage. Anytime I can get that Bowser near the ledge, I want to press the attack. You you cannot stop 
Although uh, there are certain ranged attacks that Mewtwo has to do a little bit of extra damage. But uh, where we've seen Aiden have the most success is when they've been able to press the Bowser towards the edge. And the edge guard has been lethal at times. Gives them a little bit of room. They're moving back around. The damage is racking up Orbital, and it's concerning to me. Again, a little antsy. You were hoping for that chance. Not to claim the ledge is not good. Oh, yeah. This one, a forward tilt of your own is going to take that stock. Still, 70% is kill range right now for this uh, Bowser. If you're looking at Tim, Tim is more than happy to just kind of waylay in. Eat that damage. Eat that grab. If it gets you close to this Mewtwo, you're more than happy. Up smash. Going to chunk out a lot of that shield, but on the ledge oh. could be good. Both go to the edge, and you no! mess up your up B. The recovery fails, and unfortunately, Aiden loses their last stock to an SD. No! Orbital! Oh! It looked so good. We saw the potential for a come from behind victory. And then uh, the ledge guard goes haywire. <laughs> Miss and fall. I'm gonna, I'm gonna want that one back. I want to see how that ends if we don't see the missed execution. But. Uh, it will have to just uh, clear the mental, clean slate, go into game two of set number three with a smile on your face. I, I think the matchup's a good one, though, this time around. No need to change, just a little bit better execution, and, and maybe, a, maybe a map switch, something smaller. Force the Bowser a little bit closer to the edge as a standard. Oh, yeah. But that's the other side of it. As much as we do want to see the Bowser on the ledge, it's not really the ledge that you want to be forced for. Uh, you don't want to have to focus on kind of that cheese strat of trying to knock them lower and make sure the recovery isn't good. You don't want to be in that situation. Yeah. The only reason I point that out is because it is a valid strategy. If you can actually catch the Bowser out, you do get to knock them a little bit lower and you get a free stock. That is how you got stock number one. The problem that comes about that, if the situation changes, I've already seen Tim. Tim knows the timing on the teleport from the Mewtwo, and that is a scary thought. I want to remind you how the first two stocks left uh, uh, left Aiden's uh, hands. It was because you tried to teleport up. You were not teleporting directly to the edge, and it was well-timed by the Bowser, a simple punch, and we talked about it. Bowser hits hard. So as much as I would like to see the Bowser stick the edge, at this point, it's more you need to learn how to fight properly in this middle ground. You need to be able to rack up the damage. If you're running the Mewtwo, Mewtwo might look super strong. The damage itself is not overwhelming, so you need to get this constant strain of damage through. Oh. Three, two, one, go! Wait. Oh boy, I like this. Wait, okay, 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 okay. So th technically, this is uh, with it being Lemmy. Is it a Bowser Jr. Just different skin, correct? Uh, okay. Yes, it is. Okay, I just uh, it threw me off for a second. Okay, I, I like the character, and I, I learned to. I saw my first Bowser Jr. play just a, a couple days ago. <laughs> I really enjoy it, and already we see a stock gone by. It's Smash Mouth offense. Yes, and, and I would like to say right now, Super Smash Wolves are utilizing uh, Tim to a high efficiency here. Grand View is currently up 1-0 in this match. Fossil Ridge are still hoping to find their first game with uh, with uh, Aiden here right now. So 1-1-1-0 one, 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 is what we're going to be looking at. This is just brutality, though. Nasty stuff here for the Bowser Jr. Tim playing the whole evil family side. Very much so. A lot of rapid pacing as well. They are they are moving quite a bit, especially when you compare it to what we saw on the Bowser gets up. <laughs> it's just a completely different dynamic for the Mewtwo and Aiden. It looks a little befuddled if you ask me. It, it is. You you are lost in this fact that, yes, it's still kind of the same character. It's in the same kind of family of uh, the character Link and the lore, but the speed at which a Bowser Jr. wants to play in the projectile amount is vastly different. Take a look. That shield is almost gone. It is way different to try and fire away, and with this percentage value, you can play so much faster as well. That's a good grab, though. The back throw is much more solid this time around, but that's the backer that you were looking for, and yet the power from Tim is just dominating this round. 
Uh, I'm not sure there needed to be a switch, but the switch is paying off and it's paying dividends quickly. Rapidly, we are seeing the damage meter flying sky high. It, it stalks at this point. Uh, the Mewtwo needs to pull something off. They need it fast. The projectile's doing work. Clutch comes out. We'll not be able to get it. The back row will be the confirm, but you're still a tall task ahead. And I think right now, you're more than happy about training out damage. If you are Tim, you're using those projectiles, trying to trade out a little bit of chip damage until you can get them to around 80 or 90% on the Mewtwo. Nice hold on the neutrals. You are going to go just for that raw damage, but this is the punch back. You're only at 54. So if you're looking at Aiden, this is going to be a little bit of a difference. It's a little bit scary. No shit in a back throw, though. This might be the one that you're going for. Both angling for off the edge. That ledge guard, as you were talking about, Kendo is big, and that's a punch, but the wide stage is too good for Get back on Saint. Nicely done, and we will see if they're able to finish it on the second stock. The throw won't quite get the confirm. And it, there, it there it is. There it is. Slide is good. Tim wins it out, and even though that last one looked close, you have to remember there was a whole stock to play with. Right, very well done by Tim, overwhelming strength. And as much as I liked Kai in the earlier rounds for Fossil, right now, Grandview High School are looking much more overall well-rounded. I, I do get the feeling. I, I, we can make predictions all we want on it, but uh, yep. what we have seen each match has been great center control out of everyone that whether it was jonathan on the wario whether it was kai on the little mac uh, granted kai i don't think was challenged as much as rj could have uh and then this bowser into a bowser jr combo on the side for tim was uh <laughs> it didn't get the same stats that jonathan on the wario into the incineroar did but oh was it fun to watch it was amazing, and I'm actually very curious to see what gets thrown down. If Kai is thrown out in this round four, that's the big question mark. Who are you actually matched up against? I would say, if I were the Little Mac player, I would want to face off against Tim. Um, mm -hmm. I do not, I personally do not have a good track record against a Wario and uh, the likes of an Incineroar. However, uh, both combinations have a piece that does not have projectiles and a piece that does have projectiles if you look down the road for jonathan and tim so i'm like i'm very interested to see what gets thrown around in the pits because obviously kai's coming out in either round four or round five uh, another fun aspect of this is the unpredictability because we have seen character swaps more often than we have seen students on one character so that tells me like it's not quite far in five alarm fire level of uh i don't know what to do in this scenario but the coaches have their work cut out for them in trying to develop what they want to be the ideal matchup for set number four just a recap everybody grandview high fossil ridge high grandview takes the second two sets whereas fossil ridge started off with the victory and now it's anyone's game. You pick your favorite or your best, or you pick the person you think is going to get you to set number five, and you let them fly. So we'll see how it goes. Little Mac on the Kai, and we have Jonathan coming back now on the Wolf, a third character for Jonathan. And it's once again kind of that brutal factor wolf a little bit slower than your traditional fox and everything like that looking at the trio it's fox falco and wolf wolf is more brutish in how they want to fight the strong combination the shock value the extra punch that you can get with those grabs with those side d's it is very good at neutralizing what uh, little mac wants to throw down you can see here the little bit of juggling the verticality that comes out here it's going to be a difficult one to fight for so kai right now on the left side is going to be looking a little bit more in danger already at 70 percent very much so I, I like the movement but wolf has equal movement if not maybe a, <laughs> a little more threatening uh, definitely more speed coming out of the little mac they will have to Put together some punches. Uh, it can't just be the simple one-two jab. Uh, they are going to have to pull the combos and add a couple uppercuts here or there. A little more posturing. Both utilizing their shield extremely well. But the projectile came of this wolf from Jonathan has hit on point. 
And I love the fact that you pointed out that uh, Kai did not feel as challenged in their matchup before. That was like the testing limit. You know, who are we going to fight out against? Yeah. In this situation, you're now up against an opponent that is more than willing to kind of jump in your space, gather up a little bit in, and actually challenge you to a fight. That's KO Punch, Ooh. use and whip. So now it's a punish game back, and this is going to be the problem. A very nice stock three so far still left in the hands of Tim or Jonathan. And that's the scary part. Another grab up to the top rope. These platforms are doing wonders for the world. Very much so. It seems like any time that the Little Mac is establishing itself on the lower, the ground level, the Wolf is finding a way to create space, utilizing platforms and keeping things going. Love what we're seeing really out of both combatants, but it is far oh. away claws over boxing gloves. Oh man, and this is what you get from a top 10 Wolf player here in Colorado. Nasty stuff and nasty work. Of course, the counter can make things happen a little bit better, but it is a problem as Kai is left to the lone stuff. Able to get back on the ledge, but this is going to be a little bit of a setup. Low tilt. Down tilt is going to try and do one. Is up tilt now, trying to gather some space. You almost get a combination off, but the side tilt is not going to work. This time you do catch it, and what a fly off the stage. You don't Ooh. make it back. An opportunity arises. 106 on the number, though. Kai needs to stay alive. Starting to wonder if this is just an entire flex for Jonathan uh, as we had gotten this information. Uh, it is a top 10 character. All right, top oh. 10 player within the state. That's that's fantastic information. So thank you to everybody behind the scenes letting us know. Your first team, your first school in the grand finals is going to be Grand View Hive. And hey, you know what? Not One yet. pack, right? Not yet, right? not yet. So that was only game number one here in right, set right. four. The first team to actually advance is on the other side of the bracket. So for those that are in the venue right now, another match was running. This is just semifinals. This is not grand finals just yet. The first team to actually advance to the finals is on the other side of the bracket, which I believe 3 0'd their opponent. It is Vista Smash of Varsity ah. that will be up there in the grand finals. That is Avery, Penn, and Briston that will be meeting the winners of this match here. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> we still got one I, more. I'm getting, Kendo. I'm getting ahead of myself, apparently. Like, I, I know. Listen, listen. Need... When you got a top 10 wolf, when you got someone that's rocking that well, it's having such a good time. I mean, listen, I am so impressed by Grandview. And, and I've cast Collegiate Smash as well. This has been amazing to watch so far. Whenever a wolf comes out here, it's always fun to watch. And I, I mean, I like the dominant performance that we're seeing now in the latter stages for Grandview. So very, very impressed so far. You cool yeah, down yeah, yet? You cool down? You good? I, I you good? cooled down. Yeah. Things, I, need a, I need a fan or something. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe somebody can fan me in the audience. I, I, I'm confusing all of my information. The one thing that is not confusing to me is it, we have to see Kai with a, a little bit of a transformation of yes. their game. You can't go straight at it. We are going to get a Donkey Kong versus a Dr. Mario. I give full credit to Ooh. every single one of these students. They are showing us some diversity on the sticks. And this is a little bit of a weird spot to be in right now. Uh, Dr. Mario is also a vastly different character than the Little Mac. It, it's one that you kind of sit there and go, really? is, is that what you're going to play for? It's, uh, and, and against a Donkey Kong, you're just like, you're in, you're in for a world of pain right now. DK throwing down the ropes. 91 and then some. Looking for the spike if you can get it. Up B to get yourself back on stage. But if anything, Kai is in a very difficult spot. A little bit of spin mood charged up on the smash. If you're talking about oh, Little oh, Mac oh, and the KO oh. Punch, the OG KO Punch is here. DK takes sock number one. Uh, I mean, I played enough DK to know how advanced that edge guard was, and it was really well executed, utilizing every move in the all arsenal. And, and uh, credit to your uh, Dr. Mario and Kai getting back to the ledge, but the immediate headbutt for the punish. The pressure is on, and Jonathan looking to uh, maintain their status as one of the best in the state. There's Ooh. another one. This is getting a little bit out of control right now. Looking at the smash, a grab, a toss up, up to the top ropes. If one gets a hit, maybe you get a stock here. And that's what Kai is looking for, a good forward smash. A little bit of a kick is going to neutralize a lot of what's going on, but it's not a down spike. So are you going to find that finish 128 and then some? Trying to keep to that ledge. Attempt at a swat if you can. The down tilt is just too good. Another swat, 78. 
I mean, honestly, at this point, you're just playing a little bit more for fun. Jonathan has all the space in the world as long as you don't SD. Another grab, a toss up, almost a head smash. There you get it up there. Can do more than enough. Another grab might as well. <laughs> this is messing with your opponent with the best of them. This is amazing. A grab and a back throw, though, from Kai to at least get one. And at least gets one, and then maybe a, a little bit of a the assault in the, the, the very small wound, the, the, the trickle that we ended up seeing. So I, I was uh, I was uh, incorrect in my statement before, but uh, repeat the statement. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> Your second team, Grandview High, <laughs> going to be going up against Vista Smash, and that is going to be what is on stage next. But uh, no, no, uh, no. Uh, we want to we want to give full consolation for Fossil Ridge High because it takes yes. a lot to get to the semifinal spot and they played admirably taking a full set in this best of five sets at the very beginning but the uh, the gentleman sweep comes through one pack as we mentioned before at Grandview High going to go on to the finals. And it's very impressive. I would also like to point out a stat. There was never a single repeat character for Grandview High School. They played all unique characters. That is a total of eight different options. So very, very impressive right there. <laughs> for right now, though, we are going to go to a quick break. Get ready for the Grand Finals that you will see in about 30 minutes. So please don't go anywhere. The CHSSA Combination uh, Championship here with Play versus High School. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate will continue in just a bit. 